Hi, my name is Nancy Rolfe Smolf with On Points Tutorials, Tips, and Tours. In this episode, we're going to talk to you about paper piecing. So, to start out the whole paper piecing discussion, we need to go cover the tools that you use for paper piecing. I want you to know that when I first started paper piecing, I hated it. I mean, I really, really hated it. It was so messy and all the pieces of fabric in the paper that was left behind, I hated it. And it was until I found some of these tools that I began to really love paper piecing. And here's the thing, if you are a very precise, if you want to be, I guess, a very precise quilter, which it's impossible to be perfect, so you might want to give up that tour right now. But if you want to try to make the most precise piecings for your quilts, piece blocks, you want to do paper piecing. You can't get any more precise than you can with paper piecing. So here's the tools that you will need. The first tool is going to be your Clover Mini Iron. Um, this iron has been out for probably 10 or 15 years at this point. And before the Clover Mini Iron, you would do most of the pressing and paper piecing with your thumbnail or a piece of wood. And none of them work as good as the Clover Mini Iron. So along with the Clover Mini Iron, it comes with this little stand which they might as well just not even put that little stand in there because it doesn't work. The iron will just tip over and it gets very, very hot and it will burn things. So this is the tool that I use to keep it from burning. This is my mug. It's a nice, big, heavy mug so that when my iron is in it, it's not trying to tip over at all. And with it in the mug, I know that the hot iron is safe and secure and it's not going to burn anything. I have lots of little tools around my studio that have little melted places on it because they got too close to the iron. The most important tool in paper piecing, the tool that really changed everything for me was the add a quarter ruler. The first add a quarter ruler was a six inch and it has this little lip on the back side of it. And I'll show you on the 12 inch side. There's a little quarter inch lip on the back so that when you're using it in the cutting process, your seams will be perfectly cut at a quarter of an inch. Before this tool, I didn't like how messy the back of my pieces got. So after they made the six inch, then they came out with the 12 inch. Now the 12 inch you're gonna do, use when you're doing larger pieces, maybe a mariner's compass. Then they came out with the 18 inch. Now this is huge. I honestly have never used it. I always imagine if I make a really, really large Mariner's Compass paper piece, I would use this tool. I own it just because it's so cool. Then back here, the little green one is the add an eighth ruler. Now that is for paper piecing miniature quilts. So when you're paper piecing a miniature quilt, oftentimes the seams are not even a quarter of an inch, or rather the pieces aren't even a quarter of an inch. So you can imagine that if your seam allowance was a quarter of an inch and the piece in the block was less than a quarter of an inch, you would have a really, really bulky block. So that's when you want to use the add an eighth instead of the add a quarter. Moving on down the line, I like to use a 28 millimeter rotary cutter. Um, you can use a 45. It's not that you can't, it's just that the 28 is going to be more convenient. You want to have yourself a nice pair of scissors to snip with. I like to use my open toe applique foot. By using the open toe applique foot, I can actually see the line that I'm sewing on better. And so it just makes it easier. Mary Ellen's Best Press, again, that's the spray sizing I like to use. That's what we're going to use for um, stiffening up our block. Then we get to the paper choices. There's may, maybe four or five different um, paper choices on the market for paper piecing. I chose to show you the three most popular. The most popular is going to be the recycled um, paper piecing paper. So this is going to be a paper that's going to be very, very lightweight. When it comes time to tear off the paper, you're not going to have any leftover behind. It's also not going to dull your needle because it is so lightweight. And it's rather inexpensive compared to the other ones that I'm going to show you. The vellum is the most, most expensive, but whenever I'm teaching somebody that is having trouble with paper piecing for some reason, because paper piecing is kind of like standing on your head while walking backwards upside down in a mirror. Everything is backwards. Well, with vellum, you can actually see through the paper. And something about being able to see through the paper when you're doing the design makes paper piecing easier. So when we get done with all the demos, 
and you're trying it on the recycled lightweight paper and you're still having a difficult time with it, I would recommend that you try and get some vellum. Because you can see through the paper, it makes the process easier. The last one is going to be freezer paper. Now, freezer paper you can buy at the grocery store. Reynolds Wrap makes it. Um, cool little bit of history. A while back, um, Reynolds Wrap was going to stop making freezer paper because people just were not using it in the kitchen the way that they used to. So they were going to stop making it until the quilters of the world united. And everybody started calling to Reynolds and said, you can't, you can't stop making freezer paper. We need it for quilting. If you look at this box of the Reynolds um, freezer paper now, there's actually a little bit of quilting instruction on there. So the most affordable paper piecing, I'm sorry, the most affordable freezer paper is going to be at the grocery store, the Reynolds freezer paper. But when you can buy it so that it's actually already pre-cut into eight and a half by 11 sheets like this is, it's going to mean that you can run it through the copier. The reason that I like to use freezer paper sometime is because the wax on the back side of freezer paper, there's a dull side and a shiny side. That shiny side is a very thin layer of wax. So when you're pressing your paper piecing segment onto the back side, it actually holds it in place with that wax. So I like to use freezer paper when the pieces that I'm that I'm creating actually have large sections. So if it's a paper piece section that has maybe a large triangle, I like to use the freezer paper because that triangle will hold down onto the freezer paper and make the next step easier. Okay, so those are the tools that we're gonna use for paper piecing. Thanks for watching our video. Be sure you subscribe to our channel. We wouldn't want you to miss a single one. Leave a comment. We would love to hear from you.